Greetings fellow collectors, this is THX1138. Today I would like to share with you my original vintage 1980 Kenner board game. It's the Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Hoth Ice Planet Adventure game. Your objective is to be the first player to acquire sufficient force to battle and defeat Darth Vader. And finally this black square you have to land on by exact count. Added his 10 force cards and in about four rounds he defeated Darth Vader. So let's see how you do that. They don't say so in the instructions but this piece can fit into this piece. So all the Millennium Falcons can be stacked on the same space. This is what all four Millennium Falcons look like stacked on top of one another. So the highest spin goes first. You start at the Rebel base. They don't have any special artwork for it or color for it, which is odd, but it does have a black arrow. should also say, gain two Force cards, because every time you pass it, you gain two of them unless there's something that tells you otherwise. Each player starts with two force cards. So you spin the spinner. If it lands on a line, you spin again. You can move from 1 to 13 spaces on the spinner. There's 10 adventure squares on the board with pre-printed instructions you have to follow. This one moves you ahead two spaces, in this case into the Stormtrooper battle, which the illustration is a Snowtrooper, of course. I'll explain battles in a minute. There's a Forces With You Draw One Force card. There's another one by Probot. There's an Engine Failure Go Back to Start, but do not collect Force cards. Then you encounter a Wampa Lose One Force card. Add at attack, move back two spaces, and you move back into an incident card space, and then Tauntaun dies, move back four spaces. In the inner circle around Darth Vader, you have a bounty hunters on your trail, lose two force cards. Dark side of the force, lose three force cards. So if that drops you down to less than ten, you have to exit and go past start again, Pick up two force cards at the rebel base and then go around again until you have ten force cards or more. Then you come back. The last one is Darth Escapes. Go back to start. Do not collect force cards. When you land on one of the twelve blue incident squares by exact count, you draw one incident card from the deck such as collect one force card from each player. Let's take a look at all the incident cards. There's a Yoda card where you can draw two force cards. A Ben Kenobi draw one force card. Defeat a Wampa draw two force cards. And then the collect one force card from each player which can be fun. The dark side of the force can make you lose one force card. These are the cards that make you advance to the battle squares. Most of the time that can help so you can collect force cards. But I've also drawn one in Darth Vader's orbit. So you'll notice there is one that was blank. And a couple that let you spin again. There's some that let you move ahead two spaces or three spaces. And a couple that make you move back. Which isn't always a bad thing if incident cards or battles can help you gain force cards. Let's say you land next to Boba Fett by exact count. Or you draw this incident card that sends you to that space. The 7 to 8 means 7 or 8 cards need to be played. So you need at least 7 to do battle. And you can gamble and add an 8th. So I spin and I lose one card to Boba Fett. So that spin would have happened to have defeated Darth Vader, but I'm not battling him. And I lose one force card to Boba Fett, so now I'm down to seven. 
and I'll spin again to battle Boba Fett on my next turn. So if you land on these spaces, you defeat Boba Fett, and you count how many are left, in this case seven. So then you win seven more Force cards from the pile. The Force cards are coated stock on one side, and uncoated stock on the other side. So they do bow a little bit, but not much. In my solo gameplay recap at the end of the video, I show that after I collect 10 Force cards, I do so with the coated side up. Then any more than that I show with the uncoated side, so it's easier to track. If you lose all your Force cards, then that's all that happens. You simply lose that many Force cards, and on your next turn you spin again. So with Stormtrooper Snowtrooper, you need at least one card and can play up to two cards. To battle at at you need at least three cards and you can play up to four. Probot's a striker so he's more deadly than an at at You play at least five cards and up to six. In comparison on the left, here's Destroy Death Star board game spinner where you fight TIE Fighters on the outside and movement on the inside from 1 to 8 and an upside down Death Star. So it's a similar concept and that game was from 1977. I have a full gameplay video on my channel as well as a house rule using Dungeons and Dragons dice rules. And finally this black square you have to land on by exact count kind of like Destroy Death Star game that's when you put down 10 force cards on Darth Vader and spin the spinner. If you miss, you remove one force card. On your next turn you spin again. What the rules don't state and they should is that it should go around once. So you just barely miss defeating him. You remove another force card and on your next turn you try again. Now if you lose to Darth Vader you have to go back to the Rebel Base start and you collect two Force cards to start over. Last night I played a game in which Red was trying to destroy Darth Vader. He was unsuccessful after about five tries and Blue finally landed by exact count so I stacked them, added his ten Force cards and in about four rounds he defeated Darth Vader. So you can see why that unwritten rule of stacking Millennium Falcons is important. If you defeat Darth Vader, so that's how you win the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back Ice Planet Hoth game. By traveling the dangerous Ice Planet Hoth and become a Jedi Knight. Battle the four Imperial enemies and earn enough force to defeat Darth Vader. First player who defeats Darth wins the game. In playing the game with four players, what I did, number one, I used these X-Wings from Destroy Death Star game so I could tell who has what cards. But I laid out these cards, so there's ten of them with the coded side face up and then anything over ten that you need is the uncoded paper stock face up. Or like this. So here's what happened in this solo game with four players. Blue won. And it took him, I think that was the second time, maybe third time he was inside the Darth Vader circle. It didn't take him too long to land on the Darth Vader square. Or Darth Vader space. And... Yellow got there after him. Now for the most part, Green had a lot of Force cards. He ended up with 20 of them. But he kept hitting this. Darth escapes, go back to start. Do not collect Force cards. So he had to go back here and go all the way around the board again. And he also hit this once or twice engine failure go back to start do not collect force cards which is the same effect 
So he ended the game up right there with 20 cards. In the inner circle, Yellow landed on an incident space. And he had to go battle Probot. So he lost his chance to do battle with Vader in the inner orbit. And he had to move all the way over here. So Blue won. After six chances, he had four cards left. And this is how many extras he would have had. Five extras. So Yellow ended up with four Force cards. So he had four more chances to defeat Darth Vader. And these are how many he had over ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then Red got sent back to start. He had ten Force cards and one extra. At one point, he lost too many cards, so he had to exit. Green also hit those spaces, but he had so many Force cards, it didn't matter. He just hit that a couple times. That was frustrating. So the moral of the story is the strongest Jedi does not always win. And he does not always have the best luck. You have this very large instruction sheet. I've been showing the printed rules at the end of my game videos because I want to get right into the game. But I go the extra yard as a bonus and show all the rules as they're written. So you can pause these to read them. This tells you how many pieces there are to the game, and of course how to win the game. To win the game you must travel around the ice planet Hoth, having adventures and battling the four fearsome enemies that you will find in your path. These adventures and battles will help you gather the force you will need to fight Darth Vader. If you defeat Darth Vader you win. And the spinner assembly. What you have to do to start the game, and how to move around the board with the spinner, and to draw incident cards on the blue squares, and do what the adventure squares say, gathering at least 10 force cards to battle Darth Vader, how to battle the enemies. At the start of the game it takes a little while to get enough force cards to battle anybody except the stormtrooper, and it gives you an example of how a battle can play out. In most cases, I find that it's better to use the higher amount of Force cards to do battle. And finally, how to battle Darth Vader, and what to do if you lose, and how you win the game. They have decent illustrations, they're not terribly exciting, but they work well. And on the back, they add more flavor text for the game. It is well written, but it is filler. On the bottom, you could get free replacement parts. And finally, the classic Kenner logo along with copyright and trademark information. So I hope you enjoyed this video of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Hoth Ice Planet Adventure Game by Kenner. Check out my playlist of Star Wars and other collectibles. Please subscribe and click send me updates so you don't miss another interesting video. Once again, thanks for watching.